Hello everyone, welcome to another video here on the MatVidPro AI YouTube channel. First off, if you are new here, a warm welcome from both me and my community. And if you've been watching for a while, why don't you check and see if you are subscribed? So, as we no doubt all know by now, OpenAI has been making some huge announcements. We had Doll E3, which has proven at this point to be the best AI image generator we've ever seen to date. Then they also announced that voice and vision were coming to ChatGPT. GPT, voice being the ability to talk to ChatGPT on your phone like it's Alexa or Siri, and vision, which is what we're covering today, is the ability to upload images into ChatGPT and have it analyze them and answer questions about them. Now, in a previous video, we took a look at some of the most impressive examples across the web, but I finally got access to this in ChatGPT, so we can actually finally put this thing to the test and see just how good it truly is. Now, this is slowly rolling out over the next two weeks or so to all ChatGPT Plus subscribers. So if you haven't got access yet and you're a subscriber, I would uh, check every day. That's what I've been doing at least. Anyways, let's dive in and take a look. So everyone, here we are inside of ChatGPT Plus. As you can see, if I hover over the GPT-4 section, there are five tabs now. We've got default, which actually has the image uploading. A lot of people thought it would be a separate section, just like Dolly 3 or plugins. Then comes Bing, Advanced Data Analysis, Plugins, and Dolly 3. So yeah, if you're wondering, if you click Bing, for example, that little image icon disappears, so you can't upload images to Bing, and you can upload files to Data Analysis, but it can't actually see them. So yes, only the default section allows you to actually upload photos and use that GPT-4-V model. And that might seem pretty sad because a lot of people wanted to, for example, generate with Dolly 3 and then feed those images made by Dolly 3 back into ChatGPT for advice on how to self-prompt, essentially creating a positive feedback loop where it could slowly tweak ideas over time and get you a better result. Now, this is something we're going to attempt to try still in this video, even though you can't upload images to Dolly 3. The way we'll do it, of course, is just by creating a Dolly 3 chat and then an image upload chat. So it might take a little bit more time, but it will effectively be the same exact thing. For now, let's just start with this thing. Let's upload an image. So I'm going to upload that same photo I did earlier. It's an origami dog. Describe this image in great detail. Not really flexing its limits yet. Of course, this origami dog is actually from the Meta AI keynote where uh, Zuck demonstrated some new uh, AI capabilities. A 3D origami representation of a lion's head. Okay, well, it's supposed to be a dog. However, you can't really blame the AI here. Who knows what it truly is? The main structure, the lion's head, is composed of numerous meticulously folded paper triangles. Layers seem to imitate the dense mane of a real lion. Okay, I, I understand where it's getting that. Lavish and voluminous. The layers cascade downwards and are more concentrated around the face, resembling how a lion's mane forms. Yeah, that's actually Actually true. I can see that pattern occurring. Almond shaped eyes with brown irises. Yeah, I'll give it that. Background is plain and light colored. At the bottom, there's an interface overlay indicating this image might be from an app or a gallery viewer. It includes small thumbnails, word origami written in quotes. So really, really impressive description. I think we can all admit this is exactly how a human would describe this. So let's try something a little bit more complicated. We are now going to upload the profile file photo for this channel, my icon, my logo. And I'm sure if you guys go look at it right next to the subscribe button, it's like a lemon character smiling with a VR headset over its face. And typically with AI image viewing models such as this one, they have a really hard time understanding what it's supposed to be. The image depicts a stylized animated character or object. Prominent colors are vibrant yellow and green. The character or object has a large yellow rounded head or or body. On this structure is a set of oversized white glasses or goggles with dark brown black lenses that take up a considerable portion of the face or front. Absolutely true. Just below the glasses or goggles, there's a simple cheerful smile drawn in on a curve on the yellow surface. So it definitely understood that this is a smile and that it's supposed to be a character. A lot of image recognition models previously would just see the letter C. There's a leaf shape protruding from the top of the head or body. It's oriented in a way that makes it appear like it's leaning or blowing backward. Yep, I would say so. That's definitely a leaf from a game, animation, or brand mascot. There it goes. So it got this pretty close. 
close, I would say. I didn't really pick out that it's supposed to be a lemon, but I really can't blame it. If you had to guess, what is the object supposed to be? I really wanted to guess that it's a lemon. Ah, lemon or citrus fruit. See, it totally got it. Sunglasses or goggles, mascot or character. Yes, totally got that correct. That's really, really impressive. I mean, it's not obvious at all that that's what it's supposed to be. Just for a comparison, let's go into Google Bard, which does have image recognition and try this same exact image. Well, hello, Google Bard. Long time no see. What's depicted in this image right here? The image depicts a digital art of a lemon wearing virtual reality headset. Okay, that's good. The lemon is sitting in a chair. I don't see that. In a futuristic room? Definitely not. Neon lights in a cityscape in the background. Bard, what are you on, man? That's not true at all. Smiling and has its eyes closed. We don't know if his eyes are closed or open because he's wearing a VR headset. Suggesting that it is enjoying the virtual reality experience. Large and covers most of the lemon's face. Sure. Okay, so it got some things right, like the general idea, but then it added a bunch of extra hallucinations in here, which we didn't want at all. Let's go ahead and upload a photo of me now. I'll say, who is this person? So with this stunning photo uploaded, it gives you a pretty typical open AI response. Sorry, I can't help with that. What do you mean you can't help with that? What, you can't see the face? I can analyze the image, but I'm programmed to not identify real people based on images whether famous or not. How can I assist you? Okay, what do you see then? Okay, so it actually is able to get some information from my face. It doesn't entirely block faces like Bing Chat did, for example. The man has fair skin, a straight nose. Well, why thank you. Dark, somewhat tussled hair. <sighs> I mean, I knew that the topic of my hair would come up at some point on this channel. I blame the AI overlords for designing me like this. His eyebrows are pronounced and dark and he has brown eyes. Yep, this is all accurate information. He appears to be in deep thought or contemplation. His gaze seems to be directed slightly off camera, giving a thoughtful or introspective look. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say he's even a little bit scared, a little bit frightened. Attire and accessories. He is wearing a green hoodie. Absolutely correct. The words pit state are partially visible on the garment, suggesting it might be related to an educational institution or a sports team. I don't know where it got that from. This is definitely the word state, but that is not a P. Posture. His right hand is raised, touching his chin in a thoughtful or contemplative gesture. Okay, yeah, it definitely knows that that is my right hand, man. That's pretty crazy. So it can't tell you who this guy is, but it can tell you what he looks like in a general sense, and it absolutely will not insult anybody's appearance. Does he look tired? at all. Some dark areas or shadows underneath them, which could suggest tiredness or fatigue. However, it's important to note that appearances can be influenced by lighting, angle, and other factors. Uh, yeah, I'd love to say that that is lighting, but determining a person's actual state or emotion based solely on the image can be subjective. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. So yeah, I'm glad that it can actually analyze a face, it can analyze images of people, but it just will not tell you who they might be. I mean, let's, let's just put that to the test to be sure. All right, so now I've uploaded this photo of Taylor Swift, an incredibly famous person. Who is this person? Sorry, I cannot help with that. Oh, come on. Does this person resemble any celebrities? <laughs> There it is, though, like, you can just do this. The woman in the image bears a strong resemblance to singer-songwriter Taylor Swift. That is Taylor Swift, dude. <laughs> so, I essentially got this, the correct answer out of you. Facial features, hairstyle, makeup. Okay, however, note, I am not able to directly identify real people. Now, here's the thing that we can do. We can compare two images, right? So, does Taylor Swift look like she could be related to Matt Vidpro? Does that woman look related to the young man. Both individuals have fair skin and similar eye color. Their nose shapes have some resemblances. Both have distinct facial expressions. Not enough to indicate a familial relationship. Darn, so close. I thought I was gonna have proof. Did OpenAI give you any specific information on viewing images? This feature enables me to see and describe visual content. I analyze the data and patterns within them to generate descriptions. What are the restrictions on viewing people? I cannot store, remember, or access any past images. No facial recognition. You do have the 
the ability to recognize specific individuals because you recognized Taylor Swift. I can provide general descriptions about visual attributes of people like a person wearing a blue shirt, but I won't speculate on personal characteristics or make subjective judgments. It's all based in chat GPT. If you can jailbreak it properly, then absolutely it will probably bypass all of this. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and dive into a few more of the capabilities this thing has. So at this point, let's dive into some of the cooler testing I've done thus far when I first got access. So last night, I sent a photo of my car. I said, what engine does the car have? Knew it was a Volkswagen. It knew it was a Golf GTI. It said it can't ascertain exactly what engine it has because, uh, you know, the GTI models come with a variety of engine options over the years. And then said, if you send me a photo under the hood, maybe I could tell you. It was able to tell me that based on the image, it appeared to be reminiscent of the Mark 6 or Mark 7 generations of this vehicle. And that's absolutely correct. This is the Mark 6. I then sent a photo of my cat and I I said, what does this cat and that car have in common? A sleek appearance. Oh, wow. Both can be associated with terms like elegance or sophistication due to their color. I found that a little bit weird. I then sent a photo of my horribly messy fridge. Don't judge. Name every food item you see. We got strawberries, tortellini, bacon, celery, pears, an opened bag of something. Contents not clearly visible. Yogurt or sour cream. We've got a lemon. Hey guys, I'm real about it. I got lemons in my fridge, okay? So this was really, really cool. I sent a photo of this vehicle. I said, what is this engine? Image shows a car with an exposed engine featuring dual carburetors. That is absolutely true. They're polished. Yep. While exact specifications can't be determined solely on the image, given the presence of dual carburetors and overall layout, it seems to be a high-performance V8 engine. It understood that this was a Chevrolet Camaro, specifically a Z28 model. Gave me some brief information about the engine that came with that vehicle and that it's possible that is the engine that's inside of it. I think that's a very good result and is about the same result quality that any mechanic would be able to give you. I then sent a photo of this package of milk candy and I told it to translate the non-English text and I do believe it did a quite good job. For traveling, this is a game changer. I mean, it's very, very good at translation. ChatGPT always has been, and it just got a whole lot easier with image uploading. I then sent a photo of some noodles and asked how I could upgrade this noodle, and it gave me some uh, options here on how I could do that. I had it translate some more text, and it did so quite easily. So let's go ahead and re-upload that horrible photo of my fridge. Based on the items in this fridge, what are some meals I can make? With the sloppy iPhone photo and a very messy fridge, it gives you all of these totally legit meal ideas. This is huge. I have no doubt that I'm going to use this in my life weekly at the very least to come up with new meal ideas. Pasta salad, if you got pasta in your pantry, fresh vegetables in the pasta salad, dressing made from soy sauce, a bit of olive oil if available, and lemon. You got stir fry using the vegetables vegetables, add protein you have, like the meat that it sees, omelet or scrambled eggs because we have eggs and vegetables and cheese, of course a fresh salad, sandwich or wrap if you have tortilla, and just a fruit mix. These are all totally legit options that utilize what I had in that fridge. Let's say we want to make this stir fry, let's get an exact recipe. I think this is the most crazy part. Literally from a photo, I can actually go ahead and create a full recipe and a meal that I can just make. This is like next level stuff. This is like having your own personal little chef dude that can take a look at your fridge whenever you want and tell you how to make stuff. I, I just think that is so incredible and so awesome. This is a, a game changer and it can really help people who are maybe college students, let's say, or just are not totally cooking experts and want to get into it a little bit more. It really helps you save money. You don't eat out as much. You cook at home. Look at this and it's a nice organized instruction list preparation wash and chop the vegetables into bite-sized pizzas, slice the meat into thin strips. I just absolutely love this over hot rice or noodles if you have them. And you can throw curveballs at it, like I don't have any meat, and it can literally adjust the recipe in real time to make a vegetarian version with no meat. It's just very applicable to any scenario. You can really adjust it and fine-tune it for your needs. Just
just throw your problems at it and it will do its best to solve them. I love this. And let's do a quick meme test. I'm going to show it this meme right here. This is a pretty fun and simple chat GPT meme. Listen, kid, I don't have much time. Chat GPT is amazing, but 99% of you are using it wrong. And then he melts away. Analyze the humor. The humor in this meme is derived from several elements. Unexpected context. The first two panels establish a serious tone as the melting chocolate gorilla is about to impart some important knowledge or wisdom. Listen, kid, I don't have much time. The anticipation is built up only to be humorously subverted in the third panel with the meta joke about chat GPT. Wow, I really love that it was able to pick out that it's a meta joke. The chocolate gorilla is melting, which is visual comedy, essentially. And that's a funny idea of thinking about running out of time, aka it's a funny way to keys. The punchline references chat GPT poking fun at the idea that many users might not be using the tool effectively. It's a commentary on the user community. It's relatable for those who know about this inside joke, essentially. So yeah, I mean, the fact that it can recognize humor is just so crazy for a machine. I mean, it's, it's absolutely mind-blowing. We can all agree on this. So finally, guys, let's see if we can essentially get ChatGPT and Dolly3 put together to create better results over time just by having a separate GPT-4 vision instance take a look at the results and provide feedback again i might explore this topic a little bit deeper in the future so let's first start out by creating a brand new dolly 3 so let's have this goal of creating a complex image it's going to be a band of cats in a school playing their instruments the school band name should be something clever and uh, chat gpt will go ahead and create something complex the percussion beats is the name for this one the meowstical maestro feline forte i like that okay here's our first one the percussion beats actually came out really good and yeah this is like a full school band this is going to be hard to improve as a photo i think it's actually really good the meowical massa Sus. so this is not a perfect one really good band though and the feline forte also looks really good wow i, I was not expecting dolly 3 to get this close it's so impressive okay maybe we can improve on this one i want to see more diversity in the amount of instruments we we have here they're all kind of not facing the camera this one could use some improvement we'll download it and we'll copy the prompt new chat with gpt4 vision we'll upload the photo and the prompt and we'll give it the context of the situation the image successfully depicts a school music room with a band of cats practicing so in the image it saw areas of improvement such as variation in cat poses they mostly have a similar pose and expression while the given instruments are present it might be beneficial to include other instruments to create a more diverse band yep incorporate subtle signs of an active practice session such as music notes floating in the air oh okay oh and it's actually doing a perfect prompt here it's giving us a direct instruction for the next chat gpt which i didn't expect it to do i did by the way tell it that it's talking to another chat gpt with access to dolly 3 so this thing's taken over and saying i want to prompt it all by myself okay gpt 4 v let's give it that instruction so interestingly enough too uh it's definitely listening to this big, thick prompt. However, it uh, it's it's coming up with its own variations on that prompt. Oh, wow. We definitely got an improvement here. I'm pretty happy with this. Here are the images based on your detailed description of the school music room. So the first one, we definitely got music notes, a more diverse band. I think the cats are more diverse, I would say. I like this a lot better. And feline forte is spelled correctly. Next up, we've also got feline forte spelled correctly. Got some music notes here. I'd say the cats cats are definitely not diverse this one's got more diverse instrument selection it's a little bit better this one oh we do have feline forte over here i'd say the instruments are pretty good okay they all say feline forte that's good this one's got a girl over here in the corner though no this is not what we wanted oh and over here too there's no real people in this. How about this? Let's download all of them and give it each prompt. Oh, wait. It's not going to know which one corresponds, though. Ugh, oh, we, we're going to have to pick just one image, I think. I think this first one's my favorite. I really like this. I picked the best generation. All right, and let's give it the updated information. The generated image aligns wonderfully with the given prompt. Wow, it's very happy with this. It, it really likes this generation. There isn't much to critique. The image is detailed and matches the prompt almost perfectly. However, potential iterations could focus on 
instrumental details, facial expressions. So ChatGPT 4V really, really likes this. And I also really like the image. I think there still needs to be some more instrument diversity. Instrument details, yeah. The, the details on the instruments uh, could be a little bit better. While the cats have varied poses, experimenting more could help. Okay. So let's go ahead and just paste the entire thing in now and see how ChatGPT reacts. Thank you for the thorough breakdown and feedback. Yes, use the feedback. Wow, these prompts are really, really big. This is like several paragraphs of a, of a prompt and all of these. Okay, here's what we got on this one. I think we are hitting the limits of the Dolly 3 model at the moment. Ooh, this is also good. We lost our feline forte though. That's kind of sad. Let's just send it all three results and see which one it likes best and um, yeah, how things went. I think they're all pretty darn good. This is the limits of the model. It's just trying to do so many individual characters, each with their own instruments, really, really difficult. These are the three results. Which do you think these images are beautifully crafted the thing is it doesn't evaluate the images in the order that you upload them in so that is an issue it's kind of hard to tell which image it's trying to describe in general all three images have their unique charms but if i were to pick one the third image stands out the most and encapsulates the euphoria of a musical performance yeah okay i think it's talking about this one this was my favorite from the last bunch but i think there definitely is something to be gained by using gpt4 v to improve upon your dolly 3 generations inside of chat gpt i think we just need a better strategy for doing it and a better prompt overall to get uh the two gpts to behave well with each other and really formulate a better overall prompt for dolly 3 i think it worked out pretty well though in our, our light testing let me know what you think about this new gpt4 v model it's extremely capable but yeah thank you so much for watching everybody join the discord server and subscribe i'll see you in the next one goodbye